Local programming on KRWG made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to Fronteras, a Changing America. I'm Anthony Moreno. Our guests this week are part of a group called the Critical Scholars Collective, which showed a documentary recently here on the campus of New Mexico State University about the banning of ethnic studies in Arizona public schools. The film focused on the Tucson Public School District and the, the battle that in, in engaged between students, teachers, and the administration within that school district and the state superintendent school of the school district in Arizona. Now let's take a look at the film before we begin by Ari Palos called Precious Knowledge. You pick up a history book and you don't really see any other cultures in there but Caucasian, white people. We were like the Mexicans sitting in the back just sitting there because we had to be there. I had a teacher that would tell me like, oh, you're not going to go to college. The way things were going, I probably just would have just left school. I'm not going to lie, I've hated education. Everybody knew that the school system was discriminatory. There was an urgency for us to make a statement. We're going to push the envelope a little further. Good morning, you looking for M215? Yes, sir. That's my class. I'm Mr. Acosta. What's your name? It was really about how can we turn this around? How do we fix societal problems in our school? This class is based on critical thinking, and in that does come empowerment. I actually know my history now. I started getting A's and B's. Our students are graduating at a much higher rate. Our kids are going to college at a much higher rate. What's being done down here in Tucson Unified School District is teaching of hate speech, Sedition. I'm calling on the school district to shut down the ethnic studies program. Yeah, right, the yeah. program is administered by vehemently anti-American zealots. It doesn't teach us to be anti-American, it teaches us to embrace America. This is what is beautiful to all of us. No matter how far this bill goes, we're here together in the lucha. We believe it's a matter of life and death. When they try to take these classes away, it's something impossible. God, God have The idea that race is no longer an issue, what we're saying is BS. If you want a different culture, go back to that culture. But this is America. You get away from my border! It's about the freedom to ask the questions that are the most pertinent in the way they view the world. When you have students demonstrating wearing brown shirts, bandanas, this is serious. Joining us now to talk about this film and also the issue is Dr. Dulcinea Lara with the Criminal Justice Department here at New Mexico State University and Dr. Marisal Ruiz uh, with the Curriculum and Instruction Department and Dr. Ruiz, you are also um, in charge of bilingual education here at the university as well. Um, I would like to start off with you, Dr. Ruiz, before we dive into things, there seems to be some of a, a misconception of ethnic studies. I was wondering if you could give us a uh, definition, the correct definition of what an ethnic studies course really is. Um, well, I'll let my uh, Dr. Lara do that. Um, so ethnic studies is a discipline, it's a field, and uh, to go into a little bit of the history, ethnic studies emerged um, in California largely in the Bay Area uh, during the 1960s during the struggle for uh, for civil rights that was sort of nationwide. So, so ethnic studies is a, a field and a discipline with scholars and literature. It seems like with this film there was a constant battle between um, the students, the teachers, and those who are in charge of the school district and the state. Um, the opponents to having these classes taught said, as we just saw there, that it promotes sedition or, um, I guess, you know, Marxist ideas as we go into further detail with it. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, um, how close is that to the truth or how far is that from the truth? Mm -hmm. That's a really important question. So, 
in the 1960s when you have uh, communities of color that are really uh, saying ya basta, that they've had enough, that they want um, their education to reflect their community realities, to affect their lived realities, um, students started to uh, engage with global movements, global movements in third world countries and um, countries that were literally struggling to um, decolonize, to, to, to um, restore their autonomy. So, so people of color in the United States who themselves felt like even though we're in a developed country, a first world country, um, felt like we are um, colonized in our own country. And so they were reading what you mentioned, Marxist literature, Maoist literature, um, looking to different uh, liberation movements in, in Haiti and what was going on in India, what's going on in Asia, different countries in Southeast Asia. Um, Latin America for sure these resistance movements so so people of color in the United States started to um, read some of these literatures to to make that human connection across geography to say we're experiencing that same discrimination and mistreatment and colonization in our own country so it was this recognition that um, we are not free in our own country and so when the opponents to ethnic studies um, create these banned book lists that include Marx and Mao and Acuna to name others um, it's a reaction to to what was going on in the 1960s to this um, borrowing and sharing of knowledge across um, across the across the world really so I think that's where that criticism comes from and I would also like to say one of the books that we use in curriculum and instruction and not only in our bilingual program is also Pedagogy of the Oppressed, a book that is still banned in Arizona. And it's from Paulo Freire, he's from Brazil. And Freire, yes, he talks about um, community. He says we need to unite as a community. So Mexican American studies, ethnic studies, that was their whole point. We're not. We're, they, we're, we live in capitalism. It's about individualism. It's about you compete with you, the other person. But we need, we need to change that paradigm. We need to unite. We need to build community. We need to be together. We need to support each other. We don't need to put each other down so I can be the winner. So in a way, I always tell my teachers, the, the teachers that I teach, is like we need to build community in a school. If I'm, I'm asking you to compete all the time with each other, then we're in, then I don't trust you fully. But for us to be su successful, we need to be, be united in a way that we share ideas. We, we are collective. That's what Finland is doing. Finland is considered one of the best educational systems in the world. Well, they stopped the competition, the testing. They went into more community engagement. And we're a community. Sharing is caring. No, compa uh, um, being ego, being um, greedy with knowledge, or not, or not sharing, or putting it to the side is not a collective where we're 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 about. Teachers are about helping all students. There's something about the Tucson community, though. After watching mm -hmm. you know this documentary, it seems that Tucson is a diverse area. Yes. I mean, you know, there's. It's kind of surprising to see such a issue with this. I was wondering if you know is, is this a correlation to the Arizona immigration bill that was um, being passed around uh, just you know a couple of years earlier. I would say that um, House Bill 2281, which um, outlawed or made illegal Mexican American studies and ethnic studies, um, definitely uh, runs parallel with uh, with SB 1070, which is the racial profiling law that you're referring to. Um, so I think that this conversation is very timely. We're in a, we're in a moment um, in United States history where people are grappling with this idea of what you mentioned, diversity, right? So, so we like to talk about how we're a, a post-racial nation. Um, people like to point to that we have an African-American president, that we don't see sort of the overt um, symbolic racisms that we saw in the past um, that we can sort of uh, name if we, if we think about it. Um, so people are grappling with this idea that we've reached a moment of pluralism or multiculturalism where really we're still struggling for space, right? That space that Dr. Ruiz mentions in the classroom or in the community. Um, so people very much feel and live racism on a daily basis. Um, but for example, in, in places like Michigan or Wyoming, you have universities that have strong ethnic studies programs. Uh, so I feel like, uh, speaking to your question about Arizona, 
Um, Arizona is the borderlands. Um, there is a large immigrant population, Mexican immigrant population. Uh, so here in the borderlands, and I'm speaking also to New Mexico, um, there's more of a contested space. There's, there's more of a, a perceived danger for students to be empowered. Um, ethnic studies is about capacity building. Right, so to, to build capacity through knowledge so that these students have the option to return to their communities and make better communities, um, economically, educationally speaking, health-wise. Um, so ethnic studies is really about how do we enrich communities, and so I think that that becomes more of a, a, a perceived threat when you're here along the border. Um, so in places like Wyoming and Michigan, they have these strong programs that are targeted as well, but they sort of aren't targeted as vehemently as we see in California, in Arizona, in Texas, in, in New Mexico. We've never even had that program. So I think that there's something to say about the geopolitical location of Arizona as, as being a prime place for targeting. So when you have, it definitely the demographics have something to do with um, the differences and why this is not a big deal in other states and it is a big deal in Arizona and along the borderlands. Absolutely. Um, one of the people that we did meet in the documentary was uh, Tom Horn. Uh, he mentioned he marched in Washington. Um, he was at the march with uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., heard mm -hmm. him you know, speak, and he was concerned and he uh, wanted to ban these studies because he was concerned of ethnic solidarity. And I was curious. How do you teachers, per, you know, promote um, these courses, teach these courses, and try to navigate away from something like that happening to where solidarity turns to segregation? Mm -hmm. Well, we are segregated. Today we are more segregated than we were in, we are, we are to the 1950s. The UCLA Civil Rights Project has uh, has a lot of information for for the public to go and see how we're more segregated today than we ever were. We're segregated, um, but what what H HB two two eight one does is it's it also censors knowledge. Why don't they want people to know this knowledge, this historical knowledge? Because it's not only it's not only political; it's also literature. Why don't they want us to read Sandra Cisnero? Why don't they want us to read The Devil's Highway, Luis Urrea, who's going to be here at the university in March? Um, so, uh, so then that becomes problematic. Why are we secluded from that information? And then when we look at our history books, the literature that is okay, then we're, people of color have not been represented in those histories, nor in the literature in the literature that we, we um, standardize for all students in the, in the United States. And w people of color have been here from the start. That we've been mar marginalized historically is another issue, right? So do you believe that this uh, banning of this course has something to do with um, fear? Fear, visual fear, xenophobia. Yeah, the fear of brown bodies, black bodies. Because then we see the case of, of, of the Maldiv case that just recently, recently happened. Again, that was a 1970 desegregation case, right? It did, Maldiv just won, just won the case. The February 19, 2012, they just announced it. Um, 13th. 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 Um, that they had won the desegregation. And what that does is it, it's the U.S. District Court of Arizona says you need to have culturally relevant um, literature histories for these students. We're not saying that HB 2281 is outlawed, but at the same time, Arizona is not allowed to not desegregate the schools. So this has been happening since the 1970s. So there's, a, there's been a fight to desegregate, to have culturally relevant information for our students, and nothing has happened until we had ethnic studies in the high schools. And then when they saw the result of, of people of color graduating, not only Mexican Americans, also Native Americans and African American students, then it became a problem. So it's also kind of like, okay, it becomes a problem when it's successful. Can I add to that? Um, so in the late 1990s, uh, the 
the dropout rate, or what we like to refer to as the push-out rate in, in Tucson, was alarming. It was above 50 percent, and this is something that the film speaks to. So communities were, the community was getting together and asking, how do we improve the graduation rates for Mexican-American students in particular? Because that's the, the racialized group in Tucson primarily. And they decided, let's try this Mexican-American studies program. And to, to let people know who are unaware, they were um, electives, right? So they were electives that students could take from kindergarten through graduate high school graduation. Um, so the curriculum wasn't solely centered on Mexican-American studies, but they were electives that students could take. The graduation rate uh, within about five years climbed to over 90% for Mexican-American students. So Dr. Ruiz mentions that once you see this capacity building and this success rate, um, that's when you start to see challenges to ethnic studies in Arizona, which is fascinating because the original intent was how do we uplift these communities through education. So when that started being successful, and students who were uh, graduating were, were passing the standardized test that all other students were taking. So it wasn't Mexican American studies specific or Raza studies specific, it was that they were simply liberated and therefore able to um, learn and accept all kinds of content in a more holistic way. So, so ethnic studies is really about how do we create whole students that can then navigate the world, whatever that world looks like, in a, in a more um, skilled way. And so this is what the fear um, is that Tom Horn and John Hopenthal have is this this fear not only of the brown bodies but the brown educated bodies right so these are not just working class people anymore these aren't people who are going to just fill a labor sector that we've always wanted them to fill but now these are going to become the educated professionals um, and this is the changing face of the United States and so that's how it links to this um, this fear of what's called the browning of America right this idea that Latinos are taking over so I just wanted to add that and then I also wanted to add that Tom Tom Hart does, says a lot about like Marxism like he does a lot of red, red what we call the red baiting and I why can't we learn about Marxism? Let students decide for themselves. I mean, the whole point of ethnic studies is to decolonize your mind and to think critically. You, and Paulo Freire says, conscientización, meaning we do conscious raising. We're not imposing ideas, we're showing ideas. That's what you learn in the other classes. Look at this idea. Why can't students decide on their own? And if they want to be Marxist, aren't we in a democratic country where they can, can be if they want to? They can, they can have that critical perspective of Marxism, um, Marxian, or, or even a, a different, like that we think that just because they read Marxism, they're gonna become Marx. No, I mean, people then read Marxism and says, well, uh, he was missing this. Well, he was missing that. Well, I wanna change this. I mean, that's the whole point of education, is that we become creators, innovators. And that's what students in ethnic studies programs do. They become innovators. They don't just take the uh, face while they change things. Let's talk about the students a little bit. It seems you, when we heard and met these students, some were shy, some were not really ones to speak out or participate in class, um, maybe didn't even like going to school altogether, but there was something about this course that seemed to bring out um, you know, the, the thirst for knowledge that in these students that they've never had or experienced before. I was wondering maybe if you could talk about how the course, these courses were doing that. Um, I'd like to, to take that on. Mm -hmm. uh, so students uh, of color, and this was one of the reasons that the civil rights movement started, um, always felt like second class citizens. Um, if we think about how desegregation of the public schools didn't happen um, at the national level until 1954, legally speaking, but really it's taken much longer to desegregate the schools. Um, we can think about how there's a legacy of feeling misrepresented and actually absent from, from the curriculum. So these students that started taking Mexican American studies and ethnic studies in Tucson started to see that the stories of their ancestors were ones of being contributors to the nation, contributors to the world. They started to see that their language language, um, whether it be Spanish or English or other, um, was um, valid, right? So they started to feel 
um, important, right? So, so ethnic studies classes center the knowledge around communities of color um, in the sense that um, it's not just a Eurocentric world worldview, right? So every community matters, every student matters, um, every student has their own experience that is valid within the educational system. And so oftentimes we, we see that when students are doing poorly in school, we make them go to summer school. We make them stay after and take uh, remedial courses. We make them go to tutoring centers. So our, our sort of United Statesian model is one that says if a student is having trouble, they need more content. We need to give them more math homework. We need, they need to read more um, textbooks after, after school, after hours. We need to have school on Saturdays. What Ethnic Studies says is if we start to build that person up, um, build that young person up who has faced the obstacles that are related to uh, racism and discrimination, um, they will be able to be better learners of any subject. They will be better able to uh, navigate the world regardless of the subject. So ethnic studies teachers talk about how they teach students to read the word as well as the world. Right? We want you to be critical thinkers and open-minded students. So, so the students in, in the film clearly show that they're crushed when this, um, when this mandate comes down that their beloved classes and teachers are now considered illegal, that that, that book that they loved is now an illegal book. It is a, a banned book. Um, and there was a big symbolic show of authority when, um, when authority figures did come in with dollies and boxes um, during class time and boxed up all these banned books um, and, and literally carted them out to a storage unit, uh, a warehouse, right? So all of these books that, that, that made students feel happy and engaged and powerful and beautiful and liberated um, suddenly were considered illegal. And so that was definitely a, a trauma for them. What happens when you take away those books and when you take away these courses? Censored knowledge. It censors knowledge, and it, how, how are we going to have an educated society uh, in, a, in this globalized era if we were censoring knowledge? Let's see. Sense, uh, did mm -hmm. you want to say? I wouldn't, that, you know, this, there seems like this, I mean, this obviously has happened before. I mean, you, you mentioned that these books um, that were censored, uh, there, I know there's some Shakespeare that was censored as well, uh, and there's like, there's a history of this sort of struggle um, with these courses going back to the 1960s, we saw many people who were um, involved in the walkouts during the 1960s who were in this documentary. Um, when they were dealing with the days where they could not speak Spanish at all around the school or, you know, in general, um, it, is there some type of uh, thought that, okay, well, we've made a lot of progress. Look where we are right now. Um, we don't need to, uh, you know, go this far, but, you know, we need to, you know, all draw the line to where on paper, you know, we're teaching the same courses for everybody. Is, is there something about that people maybe, you mentioned that this was, um, these were electives, so it wasn't exactly forced on the students. Not at all. Is that true? Not at all. Um, these were electives. These were classes that students um, chose to take um, on their own. They were very popular classes because they were um, exciting and they were true to the students' experiences. They were uh, diverse classrooms in terms of their um, composition. Um, there, in the film, there's um, Anglo students, African American students, um, students from the Middle East, uh, Mexican American students, Native American students. It runs the gamut. So ethnic studies courses aren't um, the point isn't to attract Mexican American students to a Mexican American studies class. The point is to offer a narrative that is omitted from the curriculum. Um, here in New Mexico a few years ago, um, there was a I, th I guess a policy that was passed where students at the collegiate level don't have to take history classes anymore to graduate. So we're starting to see the erosion. Um, of, of a critical education. In my perspective, uh, as a historian, history is critical to understanding any discipline, right? The, the historical um, narrative of where we've been as a society is crucial um, to, uh, to creating a democratic and a whole society that can move forward. You mentioned uh, New Mexico. Um, let's talk a little, a little bit about that. What do you, we just have a couple minutes remaining, so I want to know what is your hope with this event, what can be spurred from this, this event here in New Mexico? 
Um, we had a, a guest speaker as part of a lecture series that Dr. Ruiz and I were part of hosting. Um, uh, Roberto Rodriguez came in March of 2012. He has been very instrumental in this struggle in Arizona. He uh, himself teaches Mexican American Raza studies. He's a well known columnist for Column of the Americas. And he had a very strong presentation to offer. Uh, that made people feel very sad and feel like why are they doing this in Arizona that it's uh, that it's problematic that they're doing away with ethnic studies and people asked him questions and he finally said you know what have you done in New Mexico um, I don't see ethnic studies here at this university or at any university in your state I don't see this in the high school curriculum the elementary curriculum so instead of coming to help us in Tucson how do you all uh, create a situation where ethnic studies is, is valued and becomes part of the, the curriculum. So I thought that was really um, important in terms of things we can do in the future, future directions. Dr. Luis? Yes, I think that um, w one of the things is that we need to understand history and what's happened and also we, I really feel that it's detrimental to, to, to this country if we censor any any books, any knowledge, and that knowledge of discipline, right? We, which starts with let's decolonize our minds, let's think differently, let's do another paradigm of how to look at things, and let's, you know, let students themselves think for themselves and, and say, yes, I agree with this, I don't agree with that. But let the students have that option so they can decide for themselves and right now we don't have that option therefore they can't decide because we just give them one knowledge well thank you very much uh, both of you for joining us and uh, talking about this important issue thank you there was yes, that's were <laughs> Dulcinea Lara oh and Marisal Ruiz both professors at New Mexico State University they joined us to talk about the banning of ethnic studies in Arizona public schools I'm Anthony Moreno. Thank you for joining us for Fronteras, a changing America.